Okay, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Marilyn Jones from the Technology Strategy Board. Um, I'm going to talk about plastic electronics. Um, and you might think you've come to the wrong meeting, but it's what we call printed electronics. Uh, plastic electronics, printed electronics, organic electronics, actually none of the terms is right. Uh, none of them is wrong either. Uh, Kate was talking earlier about printing unconventional electronics in the same device. So that's uh, it's not really printable, printed. Plastic electronics, well, not all the substrates are plastic. Kate's printing onto paper and cardboard, and as, uh, as are many others. Uh, organic electronics, or organic and large area electronics, as they call it in Europe. Well, yes, some of the materials are organic, but many more are inorganic. So none of the terms are right, but they're kind of all right. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to talk about plastic electronics, which, which covers uh, printed electronics as well. Okay. okay. Um, so in the introduction, I'm going to talk about the Technology Strategy Board, um, what services can we provide, and that's actually some of them overlap with Aerial, uh, because uh, some of the schemes that we have are complementary, uh, but we fund UK-wide, so organisations in Wales can apply, and we fund purely on quality, irrespective of where the company's from, so it's the quality of the innovation <coughs> that we're interested in. Um, so how can we support uh, principal electronics, and how can you interface with us, and indeed influence some of the competitions that we have? How can you influence our strategy and what we do, what programs we have in this field? Um, so first of all, who are we? Well, we're a, we're a government organization, an arm's length uh, government organization. Uh, so we're sponsored by Biz. Um, and we're there for business innovation. Um, I wouldn't say we're an innovative organization in ourselves, by ourselves, uh, but we're there to help you to innovate with your innovative ideas. Uh, I guess we're most famous for research and development grants. Uh, but as I'll show you, that's not all we do by any means. But what research and development grants do is de-risk a very innovative project, a risky project. Uh, so in that project, we share the cost of the project with you, 50-50. So to your accountants, to your board, you're showing, you're proving that you can de-risk this high-risk project. And uh, that's what we try to do, especially in the printed and plastic electronics area. Because it's still an emerging technology, so there are still many risks left. And we haven't even covered yet, probably, the risks with going moving to mass production. Um, so we're there to help companies, um, to encourage businesses to innovate by reducing the risks, as I mentioned, and to help emerging markets in particular. Um, some of you might be familiar with this. I think it's uh, referred to as the technology readiness level graph. So looking across, it's a scale from one to nine, where one, if you like, is blue sky research. Nine is where you're ready to go with the product. And universities typically, I think Swansea is an exception in some cases here, universities typically work in the TR levels one to three, uh, once you've proven the technology in your company and you're ready to develop the actual product itself, you're probably working in technology readiness levels 7, 8, and 9. We work in the middle ground. So stuff that's new stuff that comes out of universities. Not yet proven, or at least not yet demonstrated. Uh, we're there to help companies and universities sometimes working collaboratively take that to the stage where you are able to demonstrate the technology successfully, successfully hopefully, within your own company. So many of the projects that we fund end up with demonstrators. That's often the end point of the project. And we're there to de-risk <coughs> that project to the point of having a viable demonstrator. Now, within the TSB, we focus on themes, technology themes, 
and also application themes. <coughs> um, so I'm working within the electronics area. Uh, I'll show you the focus of, of our activity in electronics in a few seconds. Uh, so we focus on enabling technologies, and the four enabling technologies for us are advanced materials, ICT, electronics, and biosciences. <coughs> so those are the enabling technologies. We then also work on challenges or applications, if you like, and the application areas are energy, the built environment, food supply, transport, and healthcare. We have a couple of cross-cutting ones, such as high-value manufacturing and digital services, and an emerging one we call development, so graphene, for instance, <laughs> is within the development sector at the, at the moment. Um, what I'd like to see from the printed electronics community is to be working, because we have competition calls, we do about 70 competition calls a year. Uh, we fund about 1,000 projects a year. Uh, many of those will be in the application sectors, such as healthcare. I'd like to see the printed electronics community providing solutions to some of those application projects. I think the plastic electronics, the printed electronics community, for too long has been great at talking to itself, but I think it ne now needs to engage with users, with the applications. Who's going to be using this technology in real products? Uh, because we have the funding to make that happen. Uh, you know, if printed electronics is the right solution in a healthcare application, we're ready to fund it. So we'd like to see this community far more engaged in real applications from now on. Because I think there's a lot of work already done on the enabling technology in my view. Um, so looking at the electronics area, uh, these are the five focus themes that we invest in in electronics. So I'll start from the right, uh, because it's plastic electronics, so that's why we're here today. Uh, the other area is power electronics, sensor systems, photonics, and electronic systems. So electronic systems, I guess, is a bit of a catch-all. Uh, but for example, embedded systems would be within that area. So we've identified those five themes as areas where we could make a difference, or where the UK has great potential, capability, and where a bit of money from the TSB could help things move along. Uh, so those are our five fo focus themes within the electronics area. And some of those have commonalities. You know, so you might be printing a sensor, for instance. Uh, an OLED is a photonics printed device. So there is overlap as well between those five uh, focus areas. Um, I was very interested this morning in the ID Tech um, presentation, which said that there were more than a thousand companies in Europe or organizations in Europe working on printed electronics. Uh, we've come across many of them in our projects, and uh, these are some of the companies that, and organizations, I should say, that we've identified. Uh, I apologize to those organizations who are not on this chart, but who, who are here today. Um, but you can see there's a wide value chain here, from materials to technology developers, device manufacturers, equipment manufacturers, uh, designers and integrators, so the whole value chain. And one of the competitions we did in the last two years was to try to link all that up. So getting the materials companies to work with the equipment manufacturers, with the device makers, with the systems integrators. But as you can see here, there's a great cross-section of companies already very active in this area. And I think it's about getting engagement now with companies, organizations that are going to use this technology in real products. I think that's very, very important. Uh, we also have five centers of excellence in uh, printed plastic electronics. And of course, WCPC is at the heart of that. But we also have another four. We have CPI up in the Northeast. And then we have three other academic centers, Cambridge, Imperial, and Manchester, each with its own key skill set of skills uh, that can contribute uh, to the UK uh, structure of, or, of capability. So I think we've got a great base here, companies and 
centers of excellence uh, working in this field. What we need now is business, and I think that's, that's what we're crying out to do. Um, so looking at what have we done, what has the TSP done uh, in uh, plastic electronics, uh, so far we've invested 45 million pounds, it's more than 45 million, it's counting actually, more than 45 million pounds worth of grant investment, uh, two projects in the UK. So that drives, that's driven more than 90 million pounds worth of project work because we co-fund 50-50 with the companies. The Research Council, EPSRC, has funded 70 million pounds. I've, I've taken this figure from them, so I can't, I haven't counted the numbers myself, but that's the figure I've been given. And I think you'll find also that organizations such as BIS and also the, as we heard earlier, there's been investment in Wales and I'm sure in Scotland as well. You can see already a significant amount of public investment has gone into this area. So we definitely think and believe that this is a very, very important area for the future for UK electronics. Uh, we funded more than 60 projects at TSB, uh, involving more than 100 organizations. And uh, what we'd like to do now, I think the challenges are to, is to get those value chains working together, um, getting this community talking to end users, talking to creative designers, I think there's a, there's a great technology here, and Kate is showing what could be done. And I think if that was expanded and involving far more the creative community, I think you'd have some great and amazing products coming out of this, this technology area. And of course, we still need, in some areas, to look at the manufacturing uh, proposition. There are still challenges in manufacturing, uh, that's clear. Um, Okay, just to change the tone a bit, I wanted to just go back and talk about some of the mechanisms that we have right now for you to access funding from the Technology Strategy Board. <clears throat> We've got a lot of acronyms here. We've gone strong on acronyms in the past few months. Um, and I'll talk about two or three of these things. Um, because two of, uh, some of them are always open. And we have great schemes, in fact, for SMEs in particular um, that you could be looking at. Um, so let me just touch on two or three of these things. The first one, of course, is competitions. Uh, we run collaborative research and development competitions. Some are two-stage, some are faster <coughs> one-stage competitions. Normally, these are based on challenges. So talking to industry, we will understand, or hopefully try to understand at least, that there is some issue or challenge or difficulty uh, in, in the industry. Then we will set a competition that tries to address that challenge. Um, and we have these competitions continually running. They're not always, or very rarely in fact, are they in printed or plastic electronics itself. But I think printed and plastic electronics can provide solutions to many of the challenge or application areas that I talked about earlier. So it's about you in the plastic ele printed electronics area find it, finding the right partners to be working with. Uh, we also have single company investments. And a couple of these I'll expand on in a minute. One is uh, knowledge transfer partnerships, where we support industry <coughs> and academia to be working together um, on knowledge transfer. And SMART, which is a scheme that's always available always open for SMEs, and an SME is defined as an organization, a company, with fewer than 250 employees. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about a couple of these in a few minutes. We also fund knowledge transfer networks. Uh, so these are organizations that are free to join. They do arrange events such as this one, um, and also online networking. Uh, we also arrange missions, as, as Aaron explained a little bit earlier. And of course now we have catapult centers. So these are an attempt, uh, we'll see, I think it will be successful, but these are an attempt to produce Fraunhofer-like organizations in the UK. So the first one is in high value manufacturing. And actually CPI, which I mentioned earlier, is one of the centers of excellence. 
is within the high value manufacturing catapult. Uh, so printed elect plastic electronics is included, if you like, in the, in the catapult uh, area of, of interest. Um, but by the end of next year, we will have seven catapults operating in different theme areas. Um, so keep an eye out for, for new, new announcements in that area. So KTPs, um, KTPs are about supporting industry with knowledge transfer from academia. And projects can be from six months to three years in length. We have associates that will work with the company and be the link between academia and the company for knowledge transfer. And the Technology uh, Strategy Board um, will pay, actually that 75% is misleading, but will pay 75% of the costs of the KTP. And I think one of the, the signs of success of that is that 75% of the people who work in the company are offered employment by the company at the end of the KTP. So that's a real sign of success of the scheme. Now SMART is the scheme that's constantly open. If you're an SME, this scheme you can apply into any time. Um, every two months we take a snapshot of inputs. Um, so we close the door if you like every two months. And we send, as we do with everything that we get at the TSP, out to external independent assessment. And every two months, the highest ranking projects uh, will be awarded grants. We will allocate one-sixth of the annual grant every, for every two-month period. Uh, this supersedes, not in Wales, but it supersedes in England, at least, uh, all the RDA schemes that existed before that. Um, and we work alongside the devolved administrations, so this is accessible to companies in Wales as well. And these are single company grants, which makes things a bit easier sometimes. If you've got a great idea, you don't need to wait for the TSP or any other organisation to have a competition in that area. And because it's single company, it's much faster, because there are no collaboration agreements. Um, and also, so that means that within a few weeks, you can be up and running with your project. You can subcontract some work. So you could subcontract the work to another company, or in fact, to, to academia. So subcontracting <coughs> is allowed. So we have three, um, that's visible, we have three streams in the smart grant system. Uh, proof of market, up to 60% grant. Proof of concept, again up to 60% grant, and development of prototype up to 45% grant, depending on the size of your company. If it's uh, less than 50, fewer than 50 people, then it's a 45% grant. Um, now, grant means a grant, so we take no, no ownership of IP, we take no ownership of your company, we don't ask for the money back. This is a grant given for work done. But of course, you have to find the other 40% of the money. You have to demonstrate that you can fund the other 40%. Um, so we're de-risking the project, not eliminating the risk on the project. Finally, what I wanted to uh, talk to you about was OLE Plus. Uh, <coughs> organic, this is a European program. Uh, the UK uh, and a few other countries and regions decided to get together and launch a competition in what we call organic and large area electronics. Uh, for the rest of us, plastic electronics or printed electronics, but that's the European term. <clears throat> and we came together with a, a program. Uh, the UK is heading it up, so I'm, I'm getting a bit inundated from Fraunhofer's with emails these days, but never mind. And these are the organizations involved. Oh, sorry, the countries involved, the regions involved. Sweden, Flanders, UK, Germany, Poland, Austria, Catalonia, and Israel. And we're looking at the whole value chain here. So uh, again, we're trying to link that value chain up between 
materials, to equipment, to devices, to end applications. This program has um, a budget pot of around 18 million euros contributions from different countries. In the UK, we put in 4 million euros. And the great thing here is that the European Commission has decided to top it up. So for every two euros that we put in, the European Commission is putting in one euro. So that's already increased the pot, thanks to, uh, thanks to that. So we have in total an 18 million euro pot. Unfortunately, if you've only heard about this scheme for the first time, it's already too late because we're at stage two here, so I'm sorry about that. But I, I just wanted to give you an update of where we are. Stage one, we had 55 applications, 55 projects apply. And at stage two, which just closed, or recently closed, we had 35 projects applying. And the great news, 11 of those projects are led by UK companies. <coughs> 11 of the 35 projects. 26 of those 35 projects involve UK companies. So we and Nick actually in the KTN did a great job, I think, to promote that to UK organizations. So I'm very pleased about that result. And at the second stage, the grant request is about 38 million euros and we have 18 million in the pot. So we're at about two to one. So that's a good, good ratio to be at. So that means that our assessors can absolutely pick the best, most innovative projects to fund. So I'm, I'm very pleased with that result so far. Anything could go wrong any time, but I'm pleased with the progress so far on this project. And thank you, because I know a number of people in the room are part of collaborations in this scheme. Um, so how do you interface uh, with the TSP? Um, well, I think, first of all, you can go onto our website. Everything is on our website. Um, it's innovateuk.org. Uh, you can also join our KTN network, Knowledge Transfer Network. Um, they provide all sorts of information about future competitions, opportunities, networking events. They link with events not uh, arranged by the KTN, but are external. So there's probably a link to this event today, for instance, on the KTN uh, events list. Uh, we have more than 45,000 members. Um, we have special interest groups. So for example, a couple of weeks ago, I set up uh, an interest special interest group in energy harvesting, because that brings together nanomaterials, electronics, and it brings in a lot of the application areas as well. So the uh, application of energy harvesting is important to the energy sector, to the automotive sector, etc. So we set up a special interest groups where we think something important should be done and people should be networking and arrange holding events in special new topics. So join the KTN, uh, get on to our uh, maybe, maybe accept the mailings from our websites, whatever. Uh, but every week you will find a new competition or more on our website, innovateuk.org. And some of that might be absolutely right for you. Um, so innovateuk.org and also on plastic electronics. Um, we've got a great new website in the UK. Um, established, or funded by Biz in fact, the, the website, I think, originally, is it, Nick? Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Um, and so it's ukplasticelectronics.com. It explains the capabilities of all of those centers of excellence. Uh, companies, we're encouraging companies to put their profiles on and tell us what they do. Uh, so hopefully, in a few months' time, it'll be a great place for you to go and have a look and see who you can be working with in the future. Uh, and I'm sure that some of the information about standards and everything else will go onto this site as well. So hopefully it'll be a kind of central database of the things that are going on in the UK plastic electronics industry. So many thanks 
for your attention. That's it for me. And Diokhan uh, Orhi. Thank you. Thank you again, Murthy.